Hello, welcome back to the shed. Today we are taking a look at something which I've been putting off for a long time because uh, it's a bit tricky and I didn't want to tackle it and that is DCC, adding a DCC decoder to a non-DCC ready locomotive. You'll see why I can't put it off any longer when I uh, show you the locomotive we're going to be using. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, it's also worth saying that in every different type of loco is different but the principles are all the same. You interrupt the power coming from the rails and you uh, solder in the DCC chip and then the power goes out of the chip into the motor and out of the chip into the whatever lights or different functions that you're going to attach. So the same principles, but as I say, it's going to be slightly different on every single loco. So this is just an example. And it's also worth saying this is the first time I've ever tried this. So uh, I found it... Uh, a bit fiddly, um, but uh, let's take a look and see how I get on. Uh, but first of all, we're going to need some things. The decoder. Because I'm going to be permanently soldering this in, I decided to get a decent decoder because uh, it's obviously. Whereas if you've got a plug-in one and you buy a cheapo one and it's no good, it's really easy to just unplug it and get a better one. Uh, if you're soldering it in then it's obviously a lot more hassle to get it out again so uh, I've got the lens uh, it's the silver mini um, there is a gold but I think the only difference is on the gold one uh, you've got little pads to solder on a, um, a stay alive capacitor so it'll keep running even over dead spots uh, but the, the little uh, capacitor that you solder onto it uh, I think I'm pretty sure would make it too big to actually fit in the loco that I want to put it into. Uh, so in the box we have there's the decoder and uh, as you can see it is it is the mini, mini one. Tiny little thing and the instructions uh, to tell you what wires go where and this is double sided sticky pad which will also be an insulator so that we can uh, make sure there's no short circuits when we put everything back together we can use that to stick the decoder into place and uh, make sure it doesn't short so that's the decoder obviously we're going to need a soldering iron and some solder to keep it in place and just using the car's orange speedy solder. So this is the loco we're going to be using. Uh, it's the Dapol B1. And those of you that know about the Dapol B1 will know it's actually a DCC ready loco. So why on earth am I showing you a DCC ready loco when we're talking about non-DCC ready loco chipping? Well, um, the short answer is I think this is fried. Um, it was definitely working last time I tried it and now every time I put it on the track uh, with a DCC chip in it it makes that horrible screechy scratchy short circuit sound and turns the controller off so um, to try and isolate the problem I've disconnected it from the loco it's tender drive so all the drive mechanisms in here and even just putting that on the track creates the short circuit so the problem is definitely somewhere in there um, basically I've uh, completely isolated the problem to the actual board here uh, when I apply DC power so take this out and apply DC power to the motor the motor works fine so there's no problem with the motor um, everything's definitely connected because otherwise it wouldn't create the short circuit um, so essentially the problem is there and uh, after being really annoyed that uh, my lovely B1 loco was broken I thought uh, let's try and turn a negative into a positive surely if the motor's okay we can simply fix it by removing all of this uh, and essentially turning it into a DC loco 
so you can see here the red and black wires that's where the power comes in so if you remove all of this and just connected the red and black wires to the motor we would essentially have a DC locomotive so that is going to be our starting point so the first thing I'm going to do is unsolder the wires from the board uh, and from the motor and I may even just to test it just so we have got a, a DC locomotive as a starting point for this I may actually just solder these to the motor and give it a quick run as a DC locomotive just to test that it is actually all working and that can be our starting point for chipping a non-DCC ready locomotive because by the time I've taken all this out <laughs> then it will be definitely be non-DCC ready okay so I'm just going to try and remove the board there's one Is that? There's one. There's the other. So now, by soldering that to there, I'm going to create a brand new DC locomotive. The trickiest thing with this is always getting the wire to stay exactly where you want it while you're actually doing the soldering. Yes, I think it's got it. So I'm going to put it back together and give it a quick test in DC just to confirm everything else is actually okay with the locomotive. Success, it works fine. So let's crack on with the conversion. Uh, so what we're going to do is interrupt the power supply. So we need to know where the power comes in from the rails. Uh, and that in this case is up through these red and black wires. Uh, so we need to interrupt that and put the chip in the middle of that. So the power goes into the chip and then out of the chip and into the motor and if we look at the instructions it's red and black which is the same red and black from the rails and grey and orange to the motor. So first things first we'll unsolder the red and black uh, from the motor and solder them, solder them to these red and black wires on the chip and we're going to keep the soldering iron on for as little time as possible uh, so that we don't uh, overheat the chip that uh, should be okay we also need to uh, plan before you do this I mean in this case it's fine we don't need very long wires but uh, plan where you're going to put the chip in my case it's going to go there and just make sure that the wires are long enough and uh, everything's going to fit before you start okay Let's unsolder the connection and try my best to keep my fingers out of the way. Let's make a bit of room. So that's off. Really difficult to let to do this and still let you see. Yeah. That's off. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention, but is highly recommended, is uh, this heat shrink to uh, cover and insulate the uh, joints and the wires when you do those. So. Uh, I'll be putting some of that on, so let's get a bit of that 
ready. I ran out of red, so we're going to have to make do with two black bits. But that is the thing that we always forget to put on. Because obviously you have to put this on first. Right, heat shrink ready. So, we find the red and black wires. And I'm just going to cut them to the right length. Okay, so there we go. I'll attach these to here. I'm just going to... Because it's massively fiddly. That's okay. I think we'll solder that one first. Hopefully you can see that. So, soldering iron's hot. Clean the tip. And get some solder. And just... Do the smaller soldering iron tip, really. This is the smallest one I've got, so just tin the tip. Try and be as brief as possible. I think that's got it. Plenty. So try and the wire up and touch the soldering iron to the wire rather than the soldering iron to the solder so that it flows into the heated up wire. Stay there. <laughs> I think we're okay, as long as the heat shrink goes over it. Just using the edge of the soldering iron, shrink the heat shrink without touching the wire. And definitely without touching the chip. survived. Next. So we're going to have the chip there. Next we're going to do the orange and grey to the motor. So uh, I'm just going to strip a bit off those. I'm not going to cut it too short because it will be too fiddly otherwise. using my uh, highly professional wire strippers, aka my teeth. Not recommended. Do get proper, proper wire strippers. I should really follow my own advice. Right, there we are. So, red and grey to motor. Now this is the bit where the it's good to have a third hand device, or in my case, crocodile clips. <clears throat> so I reckon if I clip that to there, it'll stay where I want. 
Wait, we'll leave it there. Okay. Turn it around at least so you can hopefully see. Get the tip tin so it's nice and shiny. Heat the job up. Give it a test. Seems okay. Yep. Same on the other side with the grey this time. Now with this loco, I've got no lights or other functions, so actually these other wires can just be snipped off. I might just bundle them up just in case I ever do decide to add any more functions to this later on. Such a fiddly job. There we go. That's about that. Right. Clean. Tin. Uh, why can you... There we go. Heat. Okay, but we've now got the knife soldered to the... There we are. <laughs> Rescue that. I think the uh, whole little circular connector block desoldered from the motor for a second there. But that's back on now. I'll give that a test. That's fine. So there we are. So I'm just going to bundle those wires up, neaten everything up, and... Uh, put it into place. So the chip is nicely stuck down there and we just got to fold the wires in neatly. And that should be it. Okay, she's back on the track. Let's give her a try. There we go. Success. I think we'll call that a win. Impressed with the lens chip, it does seem to be very smooth. One cool thing I've just noticed about the chip is if you suddenly hit the change direction button, it doesn't suddenly change direction. It gracefully slows down and stops and then goes back the other way, which is pretty neat. So that's obviously built right into the chip. And as you can see, the slow running is very good and very smooth. So impressed with that. So yeah, uh, happy with that. Uh, what I would say is make sure you plan everything out. Make sure everything fits uh, before you start. Make sure you've got all the stuff. Uh, try and think about uh, short circuits and uh, not creating any. And make sure everything's insulated. Take your time and uh, go for it. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.